funny. Please, hear, let's hear it for Greg Shapiro. Excellent. Are we there? Good, good. Okay, folks, uh, hi to Kirsten's mom. Very happy you're watching on the live stream. How are you guys doing? That was terrible, that's, but that's fine. That's what we expected for the speaker after the lunch break for a lot of you. It's like, uh, we have to start again. Yes, we do. Uh, let's try again, maybe with a more American style. Yeah, we've been hell of Nederlander, but uh, let's be a bit more American. How you guys doing? Excellent, very good. Okay, um, in fact, um, how many uh, men do we have here today? Men? Look at that reaction, isn't that great? It's the men are like, is, is it okay <laughs> that we are here? Yes, it's totally okay. I myself am the first, you know, I guess male solo speaker here today. Some people were <laughs> teasing me already. Oh, so you have to crash the women's conference. Well, well done. Uh, no, 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 I was asked by women to be here and I obeyed, that's why. I'm here. Uh, about how many women here today? Yes, there we go. You're allowed to make some noise there. Excellent. Well, good, good. Uh, and it's nice to see that there is a mix. It's not just one gender completely. Uh, I think there's just a research uh, been proving uh, that, that uh, everybody's at the, on their best behavior. Offices are more efficient when there's a mix of genders. Uh, all women, eh, maybe not so good. All men, definitely not so good. But uh, a mix is good. How many Dutch people here today? Dutch people? Okay. Okay, a little bit of woo, mostly just <laughs> one, raising hands and waiting to be counted. Interesting. Uh, any not Dutch people? Not Dutch people? Yeah. Again, not Dutch people more proud of not being Dutch <laughs> than Dutch people are proud of being Dutch. I love that. That's just interesting. Um, well, today I was asked to talk about what uh, feminism uh, means to me and women talks. What does that mean to me as an American Netherlander? And uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about right now might be somewhat offensive to some people, but I'm only sharing my own personal experience. And uh, yeah, uh, for example, well, here's the thing. Can a man be a feminist? Um, I've had difference of opinion on this, and I can see both sides, but uh, I'll just ask this crowd right here. Hands up, how many people think men can be feminists? Okay, interesting. And how, maybe, how many people disagree? They're like, please, we have finally have one term just for ourselves. Can we have this to ourselves now? I'm just, interesting. Good for you, and I know some people are more like voting like Americans do. <laughs> we love democracy, but I was too bored when it was time to vote, or I don't know, too busy. Uh, uh, but fair enough. Um, well, to answer that question, I thought I would uh, uh, talk about, yeah, my own uh, experience, I suppose, with uh, raising two kids here in the Netherlands. And uh, I'm married now to a, a Dutch woman, uh, came for work, stayed for love, if you're not from the Netherlands, fair warning, it can happen to you too. Uh, very nice country to uh, live and bring up kids, as it turns out. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I I'm married now to a wonderful woman, and uh, she has sort of led me in uh, studying and understanding uh, what uh, feminism means here in, in the Netherlands. And, uh, and I like it. I'm sort of following the lead, you know. And uh, now we have two kids, and uh, my daughter is uh, 14, my son is 11. And my daughter has just reached that point when she's become a woman. And this is when it gets really interesting for me because um, we raised her, you know, I let the mom set the lead basically. And when my daughter was like four years old and she said, where do babies come from? And she looked at me, I looked at the mom, you know, like, well, it's your country and it's, yeah, kind of, you know, I'll just let you take the lead on this one, dear yoink. And uh, my American prudishness kind of kicked in. Um, but uh, yeah, my wife was pretty soon having us uh, talk about just the basics of human biology uh, as I understood it. Uh, that is maybe a bit more uh, Dutch tradition of talking about human sexuality as a normal part of the human experience. 
certainly more than my family does back in America. Uh, pretty soon we were giving little uh, books to our kids. My daughter had a book called Sammy the Super Sperm, and it was all about Sammy was a great swimmer. He was a sperm uh, out of millions of sperm, and his job was to transmit his genetic information to the egg, and here's how that happens, and it's very graphic, you know. And we were taking this book back to my family back in the United States, and oh, well, it's time to take the kids to bed. What would you like to read? Sammy the Super Sperm! And <laughs> do you know how you laugh at little kids when they hear information that they're not ready for and they just don't want to, you know, like you have to eat your vegetables and sometimes they'll just go, la, 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 I can't hear you. That's what my parents did when <laughs> they got their hands on Sammy the super sperm, you know. <laughs> la, 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 we're not talking about that in front of the children. And yeah, it's, uh, it's just a different way, isn't it? Uh, but uh, right now we have, you know, uh, my daughter. And my daughter is now 14, and now that it's time to have the talk about sexuality, now that my daughter is a woman, she's back to, la, 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 no, I don't want to talk about it, and certainly not with my father, thank you very much, la, la, la. Uh, and okay, fine, uh, that's why we have the younger brother. Now, the younger brother is 11 years old, and he knows that his older sister is particularly sensitive about this topic, so he will come home and he will talk about, oh yes, I know all about sexuality, and uh, my uh, friends on the school playground have been telling me about how it works. They have many videos you can study, and I'm thinking, oh God, where are we going with this? Um, but then again, sometimes I do have to get involved, because my son, I will see him on the playground, and I will see his classmates. This is in a, like, Freie School, fairly liberal Dutch school in, in Amsterdam, and uh, I will see uh, some of the kids calling the other kids homo, uh, and if I hear my kid saying that, I'll smack him. I can't help it. I just, uh, th th yeah, that, that shouldn't happen. Uh, and sometimes I just have to correct them. I uh, heard someone in my son's class uh, call another kid in the class pussy. And uh, yeah, and then I also hear like, oh yeah, have you, got, have you got any balls? Or are you being a pussy? And I told my son, that is just factually inaccurate, okay? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I have to quote another comedian, uh, Stephanie Tucci, who's wonderful, and uh, she was basically saying that, uh, you know, if we're using that term, like, the, a, a, a vagina is made of muscle, basically. I mean, you can do vaginal gymnastics. Can you do that with testicles? No, you can't. <laughs> In fact, if you have any balls or not, testicles are, by definition, if there's any threat, they retreat up into the abdomen. <laughs> if you hit them, they will result in, in doubling over and no action and, and to, yeah, total uh, surrender. No, I think that's just factually wrong. Um, and then, of course, uh, came these information infographics that were coming up on like Facebook, Jezebel.com. Friends of mine are now sending me things from the US. There was an infographic that said the annual cost of owning a vagina and uh, yeah my daughter and I have to talk about that uh, and it's a uh, 2,500 US dollars a year and she said now if it's an academic kind of uh, way of studying this uh, feminism and gender and then we can start talking about it um, we also talked about how there's the glass ceiling or there's the uh, gender inequality in pay wage inequality in the US. President Obama just said it in the State of the Union address, women earn 77 cents uh, for every dollar that, America, that American men earn. Um, but the interesting thing was not just the, the uh, wage inequality, uh, it was the categories of the costs of owning a vagina. 2,500 US dollars a year, if you're earning a salary, think of how much how nice it would be to have a bonus of an extra 2,500 US dollars, because you did a good job. And now imagine that you're not getting paid the same as men are already getting paid, and you have to subtract $2,500 for owning a vagina. But it was my daughter who noticed the first big uh, cost in America was birth control, and the second cost was shaving and shaving accessories. And it was my daughter who pointed out that's optional, actually, isn't it? And that led us to the third eye-opener, which was the woman tax. Uh, I don't know if you know womantax.org. Uh, they just take women's and men's products and put them right next to each other. Men's products, like men's shavers. A packet of 10 
uh, disposable razors is two euros. Pink, disposable razors, pack of 10, 250. Because, you know, pink is a much more expensive uh, plastic uh, to make, apparently. Um, and it goes for pain relievers as well, $5 for men, $5.50 for women, toys, mega blocks are $21 for a boy's box, and for girls, $25.50. Um, and it's just across the board, and, and it's another $1,400 per year that women end up spending uh, on these items. And that's when my daughter and I decided to do uh, a project together. This was father-daughter bonding, and this is how we started dealing with feminism. And we went through the health and beauty store, and we studied some of the biological necessities that you are gonna have to pay for. That's unavoidable. But then the question, maybe it's not what they're selling, it's what we're buying and the optional items. I mean, first, biological, fine. Uh, from panty liners, panty shields, panties, no, but edible panties, yes, in case you get hungry. Uh, <laughs> Those are in there. Birth control, of course, feminine hygiene, feminine super hygiene, feminine vitamin supplements, iron supplements. I am Iron Woman. Uh, pregnancy tests, yes. Well, wet wipes to clean up after pregnancy tests. Valium tablets for after the results of the pregnancy test. Uh, <laughs> Pregnancy needs, motherhood needs, breastfeeding needs, breastfeeding pump, breastfeeding cup, breastfeeding shields. Can't I just use a maxi pad in my bra? No! Mock your boss not, as they say in Dutch. Uh, but then, the optional items, uh, shaving. Men get shaving cream, razor. Women get special pink razors with special delicate grip and special gel, razor, shave, whatever. Depilatory cream as well. Uh, bleaching cream, bikini wax. Special pain reliever for <laughs> after bikini wax. Uh, face, men get aftershave. Women get face cream, face scrub, face rub, intensive vitamin E Swiss treatment with bleaching, with bronzing, with orange color to make you look like women from Nord Holland or something. Um, <laughs> It's all laboratory tested, all natural, anti-aging, dead sea serum, and that's worth another 100 euros. Uh, nails, women get nail clippers, uh, sorry, men get nail clippers, women get nail file, nail sculptor, nail clippers, nail polish, nail polish corrector, nail polish remover, nail remover, North Korea only. Um, <laughs> Makeup, men get nothing. Women get makeup for your face, makeup remover for your face, base for your face, cooling cucumber pads, powder, rouge for when you put on too much powder, uh, lip balm, flavored lip balm, lipstick, but no flavored lipstick, even though you end up eating most of it anyway, eyeliner, eyeshadow, eyelash livener, because everything else is eyelash deadener, and it's because you're worth it, because you're worth it, or according to the marketing, because without it, you're worthless. Uh, hair, men get shampoo, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Women get hair care for long hair, hair care for short hair, for blonde hair, for dark hair, and then the conditioner. Special conditioner with lemon juice for your blonde hair, with olive oil for your smooth hair, and because it's the Netherlands, I've actually seen conditioner with mayonnaise for your smooth hair. And then, of course, you need the special shampoo to remove all the food you just put in your hair. So as long as my daughter wants to buy this stuff and it's coming out of my wallet, then yes, I'm a feminist. Woo! High five on that, Greg. <laughs>